Hello and welcome to you all and welcome to our Trinity Sunday service. Before we begin our worship, a question for you all. Hands up if you enjoy reading a good mystery or watching a drama or film where the story is full of the unusual and which needs to be unravelled to be understood. Our youngest daughter enjoys very much a mystery, but it is not uncommon to hear her say, as the credits roll up the screen, well, that was very good, but I didn't quite really understand what happened. Perhaps that's the nature of mystery, something that cannot always be easily understood. Today has a touch of the mysterious about it. A man, shrouded by the darkness of night, and possibly even the darkness of his soul, creeps through the streets, carefully checking over his shoulder to make sure he isn't being followed or watched. A known troublemaker, capable of making the most outrageous claims, waits in a dimly lit room. Words of mystery float in the air. Their time to be spoken approaches, and soon, very soon, we will hear them and be invited into the mystery, a mystery Ted will guide us through. But before then, let's together prepare ourselves to worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God of life, you are as near to us as our breath. Touch our eyes, that we may see you. Open our ears, that we may hear your voice. Enter our hearts, that we may know your love. Grace our souls and bodies with your presence, that we might feel your strength and your healing touch. Come, God of breath, and wholeness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We seek God's forgiveness. 
God the Father, forgive us in Christ, and heal us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The reading is taken from John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. 
There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you mustn't be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God in three persons, Blessed Trinity. The concept of the Trinity can be difficult to understand. Charles Spurgeon We can never understand how Father, Son and Holy Spirit can be three and yet one. For my part, I have long ago given up any desire to understand this great mystery, for I am perfectly satisfied that, if I could understand it, it would not be true, because God, from the very nature of things, must be incomprehensible. In today's reading from John, Nicodemus struggles to understand the concept of spiritual rebirth. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a member of the ruling Sanhedrin, is intrigued by Jesus and his signs, and wishing to learn more, visits Jesus by night. Why under the cover of darkness? Is it a covert action by Nicodemus with less chance of being seen by night? Or is it merely an opportunity to have the chance of a meaningful dialogue with Jesus without interruption? Perhaps dramatically, John is trying to portray the darkness of the old order coming into the light of the new. Nicodemus is respectful, calling Jesus Rabbi, and begins the conversation with a statement based on evidence. We know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Note the use of the plural we. Is Nicodemus referring to the Sanhedrin, popular opinion, or himself. Jesus' response to Nicodemus's open, opening statement cuts straight to the heart of the matter. 
No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again from above. The Greek word anothen means both again and from above. As a Pharisee, Nicodemus believed that if a man carefully followed the Jewish law and the traditions of the elders, he would obtain salvation. Now, unless Nicodemus allows God to change his whole way of being in the world, he will not be able to perceive God at work. Mystified, he asks, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Jesus explains that by water and the spirit, God gives people rebirth into the kingdom of God. Jesus uses the analogy of the wind to describe a person born of the spirit. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. Acts chapter 2 verse 2 Suddenly a sound like a violent wind blowing came from heaven and filled the entire house where they were sitting. You will recall that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit enabled the apostles to speak in different tongues and also enabled Peter, formerly a Galilean fisherman, to speak boldly and eloquently to defend the apostles when some of the crowd thought they were drunk with new wine. Jesus wanted Nicodemus to know that he didn't have to understand everything about the new birth before he experienced it. Nicodemus remains perplexed and confused, saying, how can these things be? Jesus chided Nicodemus for not being aware of the need and the promise of new birth, as they were plainly displayed in the Old Testament. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 to 28 I will sprinkle you with pure water and you will be clean from all your impurities. I will purify you from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your body and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you. I will take the initiative and you will obey my statutes and carefully observe my regulations. Then you will live in the land I gave to your fathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. Jesus reminds Nicodemus, if I've told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Jesus had spoken to Nicodemus of earthly things such as birth, flesh and the wind. A simple look at these and even a look at his own life should have made the point clear to Nicodemus. If he could not see he needed this spiritual transformation what more could Jesus impart to him? Only Jesus could speak about heavenly things because only he had come from heaven to earth. Proverbs 30 verse 4 Who has ascended into heaven and then descended? Who has gathered up the winds in his fists? Who has bound up the waters in his cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name, if you know? When men are spiritually born again through faith, they enter the kingdom of God, that is the kingdom of heaven. But they do not enter heaven itself. We enter the kingdom of heaven as soon as we believe in Christ and enter heaven itself only after we die. 
Jesus refers to Moses lifting up the servant in the wilderness as a comparison to the Son of God being lifted up. This refers to Numbers chapter 21 verses 4 to 9. God sent poisonous snakes among the Jews because they had been complaining about him. The Jews repented. God told Moses to make a snake from bronze and put it on a pole so that all the people could see it. Those who looked at the bronze snake were not harmed by the poisonous snakes. The Son of Man must be lifted up has two meanings. Jesus had to be lifted up on the cross and die. Jesus also had to be lifted up into heaven. He had to be raised from the dead and exalted at God's right hand. Ephesians 1 verse 20. So through his death, resurrection and ascension, Jesus has gained complete victory over death and over the evil one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. In this verse, John gives us the entire gospel of Christ as a short summary. God loves the whole world and salvation is not just exclusive to the Jews. Salvation can only be achieved by faith and belief in Jesus, that is, eternal life. Nicodemus is unable to grasp that spiritual rebirth into the kingdom of heaven comes not by knowledge and do or doctrine, but by faith. He is baffled and unable to enter into new life through his intellect. Later, he will defend Jesus against the opposition of the Sanhedrin and following the crucifixion, when the other disciples fled, have fled, will assist Joseph of Arimathea to bury Jesus' body, providing myrrh and aloes. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Luke 19 verse 10 For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Now there is no condemnation for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Spurgeon, the Son of Man is infinitely a wise saviour and you may depend upon it, having come with his Father's consent and anointed with the Holy Ghost. He has come with everything that is wanted to accomplish his purpose. He has come to do a work which he can do and will do and in which he will not be baffled through though all the powers of earth and hell should contend with him. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. To God the Father, who first loved us and made us in his own image. To God the Son, who loved us and washed away our sins in his own blood. To God the Holy Spirit, who spreads the love of God abroad in our hearts. We raise our prayers today. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people, for Christopher, David and Nicholas, our bishops, and they pray for Adam, Paul, Carol, Paul, Jane and Suzanne, who teach and guard the faith. 
May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the leaders of the nation and for those in authority under them. Give them all a desire to work for international unity, which seeks to halt the threat of war and terrorism. And also give them ways to ensure that all nations have full access to the COVID vaccine and that the common good of all humanity be served by their efforts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of God, we pray for those who do not believe and for those of hesitant belief. Open their ears to hear your voice and open their hearts to receive you, the very spirit of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those weighed down with grief, fear or sickness. May Christ, your living word, bring them comfort and healing. We especially raise before you now in the silence of our hearts, those weighing heavily today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for all who have died in the faith of Christ and we rejoice with them and all your saints, trusting in the promise of your word of life eternal fulfilled through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the silence of our hearts, we lift to you those special people who are remembered closely. We remember Michael Blades, and we pray that our brother and friend Michael may rest in peace and rise in glory. And we keep Margaret and all their family very much in our prayers at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, hear our prayers and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And for the colic for the first Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we all join in our benefice prayer, Ever-living, ever-loving God, we thank you for our church family and your world that we serve. Grant us that we may honour you in our prayer and praise, share the good news of your love and build up all through loving service. Help us to give everyone a place to belong and a way to follow Jesus. Amen.
Well, our time together is drawing to a close now, and a new week lies ahead for us all. So may it be a kind and peaceful one. And now our closing prayer. May God keep us in all our days. May Christ shield us in all our ways. May the Spirit bring us healing and peace. May God, the Holy Trinity, drive all darkness from us and pour upon us blessing and light. Amen. And so we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. When